You know what's boring? Plain old linear animations. They're so 1990s. But you know what's super cool? Animations that accelerate, decelerate, and bounce around like objects in the real world. In this tutorial, you'll discover how to apply advanced easing motions to create a slick, bouncing title like this one. And be sure to stick around to the very end of the video, because I'll show you how to sidestep all the heavy lifting and download a ready-made Fusion settings file you can drag and drop into your own Resolve projects. And it won't cost you a penny. I'm David Power, and this is a DaVinci Resolve Power Tip. Now, before we dive into the tutorial, here's a little background. In the real world, moving objects almost never move in perfectly straight lines or at perfectly constant speeds. That's why regular old linear animations often look cheesy and unconvincing. As legend has it, back in the early 2000s, an Adobe software engineer named Robert Penner was unhappy with the computer animations he was seeing at the time. So he developed a series of equations and keyframe maps for a collection of what are called eased motions. On some level, we can all thank Mr. Penner for the built-in spline functions we use today in Premiere Pro, Final Cut, DaVinci Resolve, and other modern video editing software. For instance, in Fusion, you can create text animation with just two keyframes. Open the spline panel, select the keyframes, hit the S key, and adjust the spline handles to create almost any shape you want. But a bouncing title is a little more complicated simply because it's not a single curve, but a series of curves joined together. So let's build one. To kick things off, from the Edit tab, let's open the Effects Library. Then under Toolbox, choose Effects. And then drag a Fusion composition onto the timeline. Place your playhead anywhere above the clip, and hit the Fusion icon to jump to the Fusion tab. We'll start by adding a Text Plus node. You can do that in one of two ways, either by clicking the Text Plus icon here on the toolbar, or by hitting Shift and Space on your keyboard, typing T-E-X-T, -E choosing Text Plus from the list, then clicking Add. Next, select the Text 1 node with your mouse and add a Transform node. Again here, you can do that by clicking the Transform icon on the toolbar, or by hitting shift and space on your keyboard, typing transform, selecting the transform tool, and clicking add to add it to your Fusion Comp. Next, connect the output of the transform one node to the input of media out one. Now let's add some text. I'll select the text one node with my mouse, and in the inspector pane, enter the words bouncing title in the style text box. I'll leave the font as Open Sans Bold, and the size of 0.08 is fine for right now. And now let's start animating. Back on your node tree, select the Transform node. This next step is important because it gives us precise control over the Y position of the animation. In the Inspector pane, right-click on the center label, choose Modify With, then select XY Path. This will eventually let us see the actual path we're editing. If we don't choose XY path, when we later edit the spline, we'll be looking at what's called a displacement path rather than a position path. A displacement path shows us the relative position changes between keyframes, but not the actual X and Y values themselves. That will hopefully make sense in just a minute. Okay, next we'll use the center Y coordinate to animate the bounce. Let's say the center of the screen where the text appears right now is where I want the title to end up when the animation is complete. And let's also say I want the animation to take one second to play out. I'm on a 24 frames per second timeline, so I'll move my playhead to frame 24 and click the small diamond icon to the right of the Y coordinate to add a keyframe at this position. Next, I'll shrink the canvas down a little so we can see some additional space at the top and bottom, and I'll move the playhead back to position zero on the timeline. Next, I'll grab the vertical or Y coordinate handle in the center of the title and slowly drag it upwards until the text is no longer visible on the canvas. You want to stop as soon as the bottom edge of the text disappears from the canvas area. And if we now look at the center Y parameter, you'll see Fusion has automatically generated a keyframe for us. So let's play this back. 
The title moves as we expected, but as you can see right now, it's very linear and mechanical looking. And that's no bueno. With a little effort, I uncovered a site containing a lot of the eased motion curves Robert Penner documented. If you want to get deeper into easing motions and the equations behind them, you'll find a link to this site in the description. On this page, I found the keyframe transforms for the bounce motion we're going to create right now. The keyframes are displayed in percentage terms, so I used a Google Sheet to transform them into frame numbers and screen positions. That gave me a table of 10 frame and position pairs I need to enter in a fusion as keyframe values. We've already done the start position and the end position, and after a little experimenting, I've decided to leave out the second and third keyframes because I found the motion is smoother and more natural looking without them. That leaves us only six keyframes to enter. And because watching someone enter keyframe values is a terrible way to spend your time, I'll fast forward through this section. Okay, now all the keyframes are in. Let's quickly play it back. The title now bounces, but the motion is still pretty robotic. So let's open the spline window, resize it so it's easier to see what's going on. I'll select only the center Y parameter of the transform node, and I'll click zoom to fit to bring all the keyframes into view. Okay, you can now see how the path is starting to look like a bouncing object. If you dropped a tennis ball onto a hard surface, it would bounce around a few times before it stopped, and each bounce would have a little less energy than the one before it. However, its motion wouldn't be sharp angles like we're seeing here. They'd be rounder and more parabolic in shape. And thanks to Mr. Penner's work, it's easy to make that happen. All we need to do is click anywhere in the spline pane, hit Control A on your keyboard to select all the keyframes, then hit F to flatten them. Notice how that turns the sharp angles between the keyframes into nice, rounded, organic curves. Now let's play the animation back. Okay, as you can see, that's looking good. One thing we can do to make the animation more convincing is to add some motion blur. To do that, make sure your transform node is selected. Then in the inspector pane, click the settings icon. And halfway down the tab, click the motion blur checkbox. That reveals a number of parameters. The only one we'll change is the quality value. I normally set this to five. You can set it higher, just know that motion blur is processor intensive, so higher values can bog down timeline playback and renders. I find a quality value of five is a good compromise. Now let's play back the animation. The effect is subtle, but if you look closely, you can tell the title is slightly blurred while it's moving, and at the tops and bottoms of bounces, the blur disappears briefly, like it would in real life. So things are looking good now. But one final thing we can add to really sell the animation is some sound effects. I've recorded a rubber ball bouncing on my hardwood floor and chopped it up into individual clips. I'll add bounce one, so the impulse lines up at frame nine, bounce two at frame 18, bounce three at frame 22, and bounce eight, which is a series of three low volume final bounces at frame 24. Now let's play it back. Yes, that's feeling really good. I like it. So there you have it. That's how you create a slick animated bouncing title. As I promised at the start of the video, I'm making the assets we created today, including the sound effects available for download at drfreebies.com. They're 100% free for you to download and you're welcome to use them in commercial and personal projects royalty free. The only thing I ask is this. If you use these assets in a video you post to YouTube or any other social media platform, please use the hashtag DRFreebies in your video description so I can follow you and check out your work. Once again, you'll find the assets from today's tutorial at DRFreebies.com. That's it for today. If you have questions, let me know in the comments. And if you're digging these power tips, you know what to do. Once again, I'm David Power, and I'll see you in the next Power Tip.